Universio. The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. Ignite the Inferno. You wish to see me, sir? The Emperor is dead. So what happens now? We retaliate, Commander. We've been fighting our whole lives. Today, the Rebellion dies. The Empire's time has come. This is not our mission. I am your commander, stand down! You take orders from me! Guys, guys, come on, make some noise. Gina Gavankar's right here. Guys! Come on! Oh, God. Hi. Welcome. Uh, congratulations. This looks incredible. Thanks, dude. I got to imagine uh, you're having a pretty great time right now. Before we get in, because there's much to discuss here, but, but first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm like... Uh, I'm... Way too hype for okay. my own good. Okay. I have no chill, mostly ever, Absolutely. and that was before I was in a Star Wars. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to be cool while I have opportunities to talk to people like this, but I, I consistently fail. So I'm gonna try my best yet again <laughs> with you. <laughs> We're rooting for you. Did you okay. just depluralize it and refer to it as a Star Wars? It war? is just one. There's just one. It's just, just one. In more. this, in this case, this is one Star Wars. Love it, absolutely love it. <laughs> um, you know, we're we're so close to, to prime time. It's about to finally be in the hands of the masses. Everybody can finally start. A lot of people already so, have it. Yeah, a lot of people already have. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So, like the official official date. It's got everyone it's will be like able to get hours it. hours away. <laughs> <laughs> that sound kind of sums up the answer to the question. What are you thinking right now? What are you feeling right I'm now? I'm like so stressed, dude. I just want everybody to love it. You yeah. know, we spend a lot of time. I'm like such a, listen, making a video game is like making a movie except 100 and some times harder. It takes so many people. It is so many hours of human heart and blood and tears. I am like this yeah, okay, it's my yeah. face, but like I am this much of yeah. what it took to make this game in terms of hours, right? So I, I just I just want people, I just hope people love it. Well, and it's also a testament to the like the complexity and the size of the project, because even if you are this much, you still gave so much to no, this. Of course, it's still, it's I mean, not like you phoned on. it in. Yeah, there's yeah I, there was no phoning it in. No. I you I hopefully you can tell. Yeah, yeah there was no phone to get it. But you know, but I mean I, I just respect first of all I respect the games industry so much. I've been a fan of it for ten years and I've just okay, so like the short version is I was not allowed to play video games growing up. I had a really strict upbringing, but I started playing them in two thousand and seven, which was like the the dawn of the triple A game. Yeah, it was like, like the best year that's a ever. Great time <laughs> yeah, to start, actually, I had yeah. no idea what yeah. I was missing. And then it, I feel like for ten years I've been like, Does anyone can Will anyone invite me to be a part of the games industry, please? So, uh, well, that, that's a perfect yeah. segue into the first question of like, how did you? Like, I know you've answered this a million times already, but that's kind of the point. Like, how did you <laughs> get the dream gig in the in the dream like franchise on the dream media form? Like, how did you check all those boxes? I, I don't know. You still don't know, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, if any, if I have any karma points in this world, they've all been used. Yeah. I have to. I just have to be great to every. Well, not that. Not that I'm not gonna be. But like, <laughs> but like, I have to. I have to assume that I just have to start all over in terms of karma. <laughs> now because I use. You've cashed it all in. Yeah. That's it. It's all here. Because it's like it's this character's so incredible. It's in. It's in the Star Wars galaxy, and it's in a medium that I love so very much. And not only is it in the galaxy, for Star Wars nerds, uh, I'm going to say something here that means a lot to them. This is canon. This is a part of the Star Wars story. It for, is canonical. It's canonical. Yes, for those... Yes. <laughs> okay, you get it. For those uh, <laughs> not uh, uh, so Star Warsly inclined, can canonical means that 
this character in this story, it exists within the larger main Star Wars timeline and storyline. Yeah, so basically, like, when... Okay, the, the best way to explain it they, is yeah. when there are many stories within the Star Wars galaxy, as we know. Many so wars. Many, and as the... I mean, just this, this week alone, they made some announcements that there are three new... Uh, there's basically a new trilogy happening Brian after Johnson's the... Brian going to get a new... Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. And then there's a TV series coming as well. So basically, as soon as Lucasfilm moved to become a Disney corporation, everything that they made a line in the sand and said everything is canon. Press that reason, means yeah. every story, every comic book, every video game, every book is now part of the hermetically sealed <laughs> galaxy that is Star Wars. Yeah, from that point on, they were building this massive universe yeah. where everything counted, basically. And it's awesome for us because we get to cover a, an era that is not that well. Well, that's the really fun part, right? To my knowledge, well. this picks up right at, I think, the end of Battle of Endor, right? Where we see the explosion of Death Star 2. Yeah, well, Sorry. you might think it's the end of the battle, but there's actually <laughs> a lot of battle that happens after the second Death Star explodes. Fair if enough. If you were in the Inferno Squad, you'd be kind of mad. Well, that's why I need this game. That's kind of why you need the game. <laughs> that's actually, well, that's, that's kind of the thing. really exciting part, right? Because up to this point, we haven't seen this story from this perspective outside of, like, uh, Robot Chicken, I think, did a great sketch about it years ago where the Emperor gets the call. He's like, what do you mean they blew it up again? Yeah. Again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so we get to actually see the emotional impact and the, and the heaviness of... Yeah. This thing has happened. For yes, real. but what happens for us, at least for Aiden, is there is no time to process it. There's no time to grieve because if you stop at all, you're going to die, right? And you are in charge of your squad and getting off that moon as fast as possible. So, I mean, that's that's what you're going to experience it on your own. Yeah, which is really exciting. This is, at the we just said it's it's canonical, it's Star Wars, it's part of the universe. So it's just a great word to say, canonical. Oh, I know. We're going to fold it in as many times as we can. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Canonical. I mean, it, you said it, I didn't, but... Well, I, I mean, you. I, I'm going to do my <laughs> part. Fine. You can say it as What word did I say? What did I say? No, no, you said canon, canonical. It's fine. Oh. I'm just saying, like, I can't be the one who walks around saying it all the time, because that wouldn't be cool of me. But you can say it as much as you want. Well, I was going to say, if we don't do it together, you're not really bringing it back, are you? We have to yeah, get it to fair. spread. It's fair, it's fair, it's fair. Fine, fair enough. <laughs> I didn't mean to inadvertently take credit for you bringing back what? all no. of... No, no, no. No, no, it's great. It's yeah. great. Say it as much as you want. Okay. <laughs> I kind of want to say it a lot. Great. Am I Okay, thumbs up. <laughs> can they say it? Everyone should say it as much as you want. Well, I just want to be clear on the ground rules so we can avoid this mishap. In the <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to be cool and failing all the time. Continue, go ahead. No worries. I don't think anyone's failing. Okay. What I wanted to ask, being part of the Star Wars universe, being part of the Marvel universe, anything at this point, it's always a big top secret thing that people are yeah, working man. on. Yeah, man. How much of the story did you know while you were filming? Oh, I know a lot. Of, to know? I know a lot about a lot of stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They I do. told you all the secrets. No, they didn't tell me all the secrets. Oh, but you like, found them out. I, like? Yes, and then there's like, well, yeah, yeah. I know some things. Well, I know you yeah. can't tell us any of the secrets. I can't obviously. even tell you how I found out about this. I'm so terrified at all times, basically. Was there anything that you stumbled upon or whatever? Because you're all right, you're a true fan. You're a geek. You're on the other side of the wall now. We've all talked about this opportunity to see the secrets. Having found out some of the secrets, were there anything that you discovered and you went, oh, man, I wish I was able to discover that when everybody else found that out? Or no, are you like, oh, it's so worth it to I spoil know. it? I want to know. You know yeah. I want to know it all. You want to know? I'm just like, no, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me. Because I'm not always going to know, yeah. you know? But, like, this year, I get to know the secrets, so I so I want to know all the secrets. I want to just have, like, a bag of secrets. So I'm like, I know things. And the heavier that backpack of secrets is, I'm just, like... I'm into it. So you for have as long as I can be, you know. The door is open for you to learn all the secrets. You're mm -hmm. gonna walk through as many times as you can, Correct. get as many secrets because you don't know when the door's gonna close. I have no Fair idea. Enough. Do you justify it by saying that through learning of these secrets, it better informs it your informs, performance as an actor? It informs <laughs> Iden's life. There you go. So, yeah. yeah, there's a reason. Yeah. You're being professional yeah. by finding out all these secrets. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of professional, you had an incredible director on this project. I did. Uh, yeah. I would love to talk about the process of working with him and what it was like. He's done some of the, his hands have been all over some of the most amazing video games oh, of absolutely. the recent generation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, before we get into that, I want to say yeah. um, there are three companies that made this game. 
They're all over the world. I've only met really one of them. <laughs> and so uh, DICE made uh, Battlefront 1, which people know. Yes, you know Battlefront 1. It's multiplayer. Yep. It's amazing. Great. So they did this. And then also Criterion took care of all of the things that are the space battles, right? So anything is space Criterion made. But I worked mostly with Motive, and they're in Montreal, and they did all the narrative single player stuff, right? And um, so the word director and the word producer is used a lot. There are so many of them because it takes so many teams to make a video game. Right. Uh, when we're saying director, in this moment, we're talking about our cinematics director. He's like, he's really the conduit to um, get all of the story to the actors to make sure that we are delivering the best performance we can in this world. So in, in the most traditional sense, he's a director in the same way that you would have it on set, yeah. right? So that man is Tom um, Keegan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that man, um, he, has, he has directed so many wonderful games. Uh, Wolfenstein is one of them, and if you've seen that game, it, the performances are crazy. crazy. Um, so Tom's story is that he was um, a dancer and a movement um, specialist, basically, right? So um, he and his husband were dancers and, and um, movement artists for, for decades, basically, and then he started getting into children's theater mm. and children's programming, and then the games industry started, and he fits in perfectly. Yeah. But he expects a lot from his actors, and I, I, I can't believe that I can say this, but I can say it with such clarity. He's the best director, actor's director that I've yeah. worked with in any medium, television, film, theater, games. Like, he brings it all together perfectly. That's a pretty uh, amazing thing to say about an individual, and especially coming from you because you've been in every bit of that. Yeah. All of those media, yeah. all those forms of media, you've experienced all of them, you've experienced all those different directors. What is uh, uh, something that sort of makes him stand out as that kind of director for you? What was that moment of like, man, this guy really knows what this he's doing. This man means it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he started asking, before we even sat down for our first table read, he asked everybody at the table to go around and, and introduce themselves, but also talk about why this specific story is important to them in a personal way. So it wasn't just like, I'm really excited because it's a Star War. It wasn't, that was not acceptable. That was like, duh, you don't get extra credit points for that. Yeah. You know, this was like, why do you need, to, why do we need to be telling the story specifically? Why do you need to be a part of telling the story? Yeah. Start from there. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you can get lost in how big the galaxy is. You can, you can buckle under the pressure if you don't make it incredibly personal. And that was the first thing he did to us. What was your What was your way in? How did you make it personal for you? How did you get your hooks into it? Um, well, I have an in, I have a very close relationship with my parents. Um, my father passed in 2012, but we were so close. So I basically was like, so the uh, the overwhelming love that I have for him, I just attached to Dadmiral. That's what I call my dad, and it's because he's an admiral and he's a dad. We call him Dadmiral. Um, but I made us have, but you know, having having that overwhelming love attached to somebody, but then to have them um, mean one very specific thing professionally to you, um, and struggling with that is is not something I experienced. So I I got to sort of replace his face with my dad's, and every time I looked at him, it was just it was like such a visceral experience for me, you know? Yeah. That's that's pretty amazing. Talk about uh, when you say uh, replacing his face with my dad's and stuff like that. I know you mean like in your head and you're yes, like of course. in your mind's eye. But also uh, inherently within this kind of project, there aren't a whole lot of sets. I imagine you guys. No, are, there are no sets. It's, yeah, it's all performance capture. Yeah. Wa walk me through the nuts and bolts of a day on like a performance capture set. How many dots are you putting on? Where all of the dots. All, all the dots. Where are the dots? Put them all on. Give me all the dots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want um, order of all dots. So please. maybe you've seen you know, how they made Avatar, yeah. right? So um, it's basically the same capture technique. Each studio, motion capture studio, has a different um, technique as the years go by. So the dots on your face are maybe green at one studio, but we had these series of exclamation points that were um, around our mouths. And, our, and So there were less dots, but more lines. Okay, well, fair enough. Know. But um, <laughs> so, so that was, uh, that was their, their technique for dot, dot laying, that's not a technical term, but it is uh, now. The professional yeah. Everything we dots. say here is canon. No, that's <laughs> not true, no. that's not true, that's not true. <laughs> this would not all be considered <laughs> canonical. <laughs> oh my God, um, I'm in so much trouble already. So, um, 
Okay, so that's the technique. They put all the dots on. They put all the dots on you. Um, and How long does that take? That takes about 45 minutes to uh, for each, maybe even less, probably like a half hour. So comparing that to like an actual set with like Well, I mean, if you're a and girl and, and they need to make you look pretty, Do that you shit takes forever. Wait, the dots or the makeup the part? The makeup takes way longer. Oh, fair enough. I was going to say, isn't is, that longer? Dots are way better. Dots okay. are the, the definitely the better version of <laughs> so your morning. So given the choice, makeup or dots, you go dots, dots. every time. Dots all day. No question. Dots, dots all, all day. day. Hashtag all dots day. all day. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so here we are. You got your dots on. You're walking to set. Uh, and I guess at that point, Tom comes out and kind of walks you through what's on the agenda for yeah, the day. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So, well, okay. So we'll go through a whole week. So what we do is he is a he is the type of... Some, they don't do this for everything, but Tom is like, no, we are doing rehearsal. Sorry, everyone. Schedule it accordingly. So the first week, uh, we had a table read. Then we went straight into rehearsal. That meant putting all of the scenes on their feet. So everything we would eventually shoot that week, we put on the on its feet on the first day of the rehearsal, right? So you do a full day rehearsal, block everything, and then as you go, you know, it takes a second to set up all of these um, boxes that are like the color of this floor. It's just sort of, everything's gray. This box is now a column, don't crash into it. This thing here is a console. That over there, that's an AT-AT. That thing, it's, <laughs> you know, you just like, it's like theater of the mind. You know, you just use your imagination. So if you don't have that tool, then you're screwed. Let me ask you, is the trade-off of the dots over makeup uh, worth it to have to create this entire world in your mind? Is, yeah. it, is it super yes. challenging? Yeah, okay. Because the thing is, even if you're on set, you're still creating, you're filling in the blanks no matter what, right? Or you're erasing blanks. Like, I'm sitting here with you, but I have to pretend that that camera and that camera and that camera, they're not there. It's There's just the fourth us. one that you've completely removed oh from your mind. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. I You're hope really it's not good offended. at this. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you have to create especially depending on the scene if we're having a really intimate conversation nothing else needs to exist and there's like 50 people one guy's like chewing gum and like thinking about his laundry list he's not there for you he's got other things to do you know so like so it, no matter what set you're on yeah. whether it's the volume which is what we call a performance capture stage okay. you're either erasing or adding things into the environment in your imagination where did that, the volume, that's such a cool... The volume. Thing. If you need me, I'll be at the volume. Yeah, it's it's actually a great, it's, it's a, a great really cool term. A lot of great words, this interview. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Vocabulary list. We'll go over them later. Um, Just. We have to go to audience Q&A in, in a second. We're going to do it, I promise. Uh, we do it every time. I will not miss it. Okay. Uh, but I know you're a huge Portal fan. <laughs> and, it's uh, true. I heard you had made, uh, I forget what podcast I was listening to. I think it was The Mothership. And you mentioned that you made some, home. you have like homemade Portal Art. Art that yeah, you Yeah, I have made. like big art in my so, like, house that I've made. So you're a huge Portal fan. Like yeah. a Big, big portal fan. Well, you said it was five by five. Did I hear that right? Five yeah, by so five? one is like six feet tall by <laughs> four feet tall. Don't laugh at me. Listen, it's, listen, dude. No, Don't ask me a question, then this, laugh in my face about my answer. I can't believe okay. that. Yeah, so walk what? me through Why? it. It's amazing. I, six feet tall. I've seen a lot of portal fan art online. I have not seen a lot of six foot tall portal fan It's not fan that art. serious. It's just a huge thing that says. <laughs> It's not that big. It's just a massive thing. It's a thing. massive thing that says the cake is a lie. Awesome. And uh, but like you know, keep talking and care. Keep talking. That's a game that I like as well. Keep talking and nobody explodes. Have you ever heard? Have you heard of that game? No. We need to talk about indie games. Yeah, we're we're done. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay, yeah. fine. So um so you know like uh keep calm and carry, carry on. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's a big red thing, but there's an Aperture Labs um. A cake icon at the top, and it says, key, you know, the cake is a lie. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is like a four and a half by four and a half square <laughs> a cross stitch pattern that is on pegboards. It's really big, and I created a companion cube in a cross stitch form. And then I like found this really fuzzy yarn. And I <laughs> here is the here is the 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 impetus of my laughter. Okay, it wasn't a judgmental no, I laughter. Know, I know you're laughing with me, here, but I'm not laughing, so it's fine. No, here's what I'm laughing at. <laughs> You are actor, musician, uh, producer, art, all these different things. When did you find time to make these giant, like, love letters to That's this game? That's a great question. Um, I was home, which is rare, and... Um, but that's good, you know. Like when you're an artist, you want to, you hope to God that someone's gonna allow you to do what you, you, your art is, yeah. right? So, um, and all these things inform each other anyway. So I, whether I'm writing a song or producing a song or like, because I'm still a musician, you know. Yeah. But like, if all of these things just, they're all different parts of the same mechanism in my brain, right? So um, I don't know. I visualized it one day, and I had a, a 
patch of wall that needed some art. And I knew that I wanted it to be darker because it had to be, yeah, like it had to fit the TV on the other side. And I have this like black T-Rex that I made out of paper from this cool company. And so I just wanted it, I don't know. I knew that it needed something and I was like, yeah, but then I could make a companion cube. And I wonder if I got pegboard, I could paint it black and then I could find yarn and I could, and then it took way longer than I thought it would. <laughs> well, yeah, our project always, it starts as one thing and then it transforms throughout yeah, the entire it, it project. Yeah, it took way longer, but yeah. it looks awesome. And, you know, anybody who walks through the door who knows who it, that who knows what it is, is like, all right, now we're instant friends, instant yeah. hardcore friends. Well, you that's know? kind of the beauty uh, of something like that and of, in general, just having a passion for games. There's that immediate common ground, something to connect on. Oh, you get that this is funny, too. It's kind of like what like Python was back in the day when you were like a comedy nerd. It's like, totally. oh, you get it, too. Yeah. We both understand why this thing rocks. Um, I want to get into indie games briefly before we open it up to the crowd because I know indie games is a big deal. You have to. I kind of want to, though. It's, a big, it's awesome. Indie games are kind of huge right now, especially like when Nintendo embraces indie games, like a, a closed yeah. world forever opens it up and says, this is a great thing. You can tell that people are starting to finally come around to the idea. Yes, that it is a, a lot of creative thing. people out there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is a great example because, you know, everybody after Battlefront 1 wanted a story. They were shouting it to the heavens, and here we are. But... As the industry goes on, you know, the games industry is just like the movie industry. There's a, there are the huge, big bunch of AAAs, and then there are these small, artful indies that maybe yeah. one person made, you know? Like, Subsurface Circular, which is this awesome game that I played this year. It was made by one dude. Come on. Crazy. Crazy. So, anyway, the point is, if you like story, you need to be supporting independent game developers. Period. Period. End of story. Or beginning a story because they make stories. Well, kind of like a little bit there's of both. There's a story there. There's a lot of story. Whatever. <laughs> but the point is... It's a valid point There regardless. are so many incredible games like Firewatch and Oxenfree and um, uh, The Witness and Inside. I mean, I could go on forever. These are really wonderful short games. So the point is support storytellers. Yeah. They're really important. And it's happening in the independent side of the games industry, which is... I mean, Nintendo knows things. So, yeah. you know... That's why they're supporting them. <laughs> have you, um, I know you're kind of platform agnostic. You're just like pro gaming. Have you messed around in any th at all with, do you have a Switch? Do you play around with it? Because it's kind of on uh, the My writing partner has a Switch. Yeah. And we basically share it. You basically share it. it right yeah. now because I have no time. But yeah, I mean. You, it's, it's new. Beautiful. It's new. It's from Nintendo. Of course you're no, going to be messing incredible. around it's with it. No, it's just, I can't, you know, I can't have time. it around me right now. I 100%ed Horizon Zero Dawn. I played Did 90 really? plus hours, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have issues. I'm a completionist, so I can't do it. Oh, my God. All right. Stay away from Zelda. <laughs> and the new Mario. Well, stay away from the Switch. I mean, <laughs> did you say Mario? The new Mario. Was good. Oh, is it Mario? Well, well, New York. What do you All mean, right. where am I from? <laughs> Hang I on. felt like you were, like, super Canadian for a second. That's oh, not a good no. thing. No. That's a great thing. I know, I know. I... Why are you saying, oh, whoa, <laughs> that got really hostile? Do you no. notice, though? Hey, they're very much on your side, because when the, earlier, when they thought I was laughing at you because of the, the six-foot-tall thing, they were right there with you. They were ready to throw me yeah, the wolves. they have my back. They got your back. <laughs> You're in good company. Yeah. Rightfully so. <laughs> um, it's also probably because I keep delaying the audience Q&A, so I'm going to get oh, to but I haven't done yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, you got to listen to the audience, right? Guys, I'm so sorry. Obviously, I made a questions, but let's turn it over. I heard we got some questions in the room. Randy, who's first? Right here? Perfect. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Michael, and this game did leak on YouTube. I saw the whole story, and you were amazing in it. You didn't see the whole story. Ooh. My tricks don't work here. <laughs> no, they. you didn't see the whole story. There's a third act that's going oh, to be released uh, on sorry, December 13th. <gasps> that's right, everyone! Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, and the coolest part... Uh, the coolest part about that is that, um, I mean, listen, the movie's about to come out, right? The Last Jedi is about to come out, so you're going to see a lot about the First Order, right? So if you want to see that before the movie, then play the third act. It's free. It's DLC. If you have the game, you'll be able to get it. And thank you. You said such a nice thing to me. <laughs> thank you. That, comment. that was very nice. I meant it. Thank you. I really um, appreciate So that. I don't know if Ian's going to be in any future Star Wars projects, but... Is there a character in the sequel trilogy, whether it be Kylo Ren, Finn, Rey, that you would like to personally see Aiden interact with in a future Star Wars project? All of them. Come on, man. Thanks. Yeah. Well, it's entirely, yes. I mean, as we've said many times tonight, it's canonical. So it's entirely... Canonical. It's totally possible. that That is something that could happen. Yeah. What would that mean to you? I mean, how... Listen, this whole you thing... Ever recover from that? No, thing? I'm already... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, sometimes I get 
this r like a not a full halo but like a ring of um not tension either but it feels like someone's maybe squishing my head just a little bit because it feels so much you, you <laughs> i'm should, telling you too many things you you might want to see a doctor <laughs> <laughs> but it's only like in moments like this when i'm fair enough you know if i if the i reality of it starts yeah, to like yeah, settle yeah, in yeah, a little yeah. bit yeah very cool uh the, your pain is very cool <laughs> let's uh <laughs> take another question we've got is it right here randy uh, hi. Nice shirt, hey, man. You're awesome. Thanks, dude. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I've always liked about Star Wars is that there's no such thing as a damsel in distress. There's no Dead Sea woman. All the, all the women on both sides are strong, versatile, or can do what the men can do, but ten times better. I mean, <laughs> people. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Agreed. Again, but along with that, I mean, how does Erdin Vesel... Um, um, Erdin fit into that, you know, with women such as, you know, Grand Admiral Ray Sloan or anyone else that has been seen for the Empire, I mean, how does Erdin fit into that? She fits in perfectly. <coughs> Iden is how we say her name, right? Uh, she, um, <clears throat> the thing I like about her the most is that this is not some, like, Mary Sue, yeah. you know, little character, you know? Like, she's a complicated chick. She, and, you know, there's a book that is the prequel to this. Read you read it? Awesome. All right, man. Audio version. Oh, you did you listen to it? No, need to. Oh God, it was the hard. Okay, so I voiced the audio book. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Really? That was okay. so. It was so stressful. What was stressful? You do all of the voices. I had no time to prep. I had to do it in the middle of my Battlefront schedule. They didn't tell me that like eight plus hour sessions is not a normal thing. <laughs> I just. Oh, by the way, you're gonna sit <laughs> yeah. in this booth for about a week and a half. Yeah, I, and I had never done. Uh, I had never worked in that medium before, and um, it was. And, I, and of course, obviously, I, I care so deeply that I yeah. just wanted it to be great. And it was the first time that people were going to really learn about Iden, right? So, so there's a lot of writing on it. You put, there's a lot on your shoulders. A lot. Yeah, you know, all those things. Whatever. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a book, as we know. What was the question? How does she fit in? How does she fit Basically, in? she's complicated, and um, you know, because her story is an imperial one. Um, you know, you just get to see what it's like to be on that side of things and to have no choice as to to what your allegiance will be. You know, um, her father, as we've said, is an admiral, but her mother was a propaganda artist for the Empire. So those beautiful imperial propaganda posters you've seen, she was the artist for many of them. She drew Iden, painted her into these posters. So she's a literal poster child for the Empire. Huh. What does that mean to be born into that perspective? So that's... That's where she fits, you know? Close. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You wouldn't be the first. Okay. Amazing answer. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, two more, Randy? We got time two for more. two more. Come on, oh, Randy. This one's right here. How many can we do? Only two. Can we get a third, Randy? Can we get a third? <laughs> <laughs> Randy, how are you going to deny our guest? Only Find his third position. <laughs> That's fine, man. It's fine. Do you. Do your job. Kill me, If man. I hadn't talked about indie, jo <laughs> indie games. Anyway, <laughs> it's okay. Don't yell at him. Poor Randy. <laughs> Give it up for Randy, everyone. Woo, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Love Randy. Next question, please. Hi there. Hey, uh, your shirt's okay. I know. I mean, I don't want to fight you but, <laughs> because we'd win. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. Next question. I think we are going to get right, three. We got time for three more, right? Yeah. So we got three more? Is there... I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, first off, I'm going to kiss your butt a little bit. Okay. Like, you are like a geek goddess. You've been oh, in that's... Arrow, True Blood, uh, Sleepy Hollow, like so many amazing things. And now you've entered uh, the canonical Star Wars. <laughs> so It's a great word. I, I think so, too. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a huge deal, but what's the next nerdy thing you'd like to be a part of? How do you top this? I don't know if I can top it. I mean, if I get hit by a bus, it's fine. D don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I hope my mom, my mom's definitely watching. She's so mad at me right now. No, um, <laughs> these are all jokes. I, be, mostly because I can't handle it. Um, mm. It's, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have some really cool things coming up, mm -hmm. but um, I think the next thing, to do would be um, to start developing games. I really am um, yeah. such a, I, I have such reverence for the games industry. I love 
um, the opportunities for telling stories and making them interactive and making them even more intimate than just having someone be in your living room. You know, if you're when and you are making decisions as a person, that telling those stories is is there's nothing more uh, enveloping than that, right? So, um, listen, I feel like I just got here. I have a lot of work to do to be able to claim that I can do that, but I have I will do so if anyone will let awesome. me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Do you find yourself when you're like doing these performance capture things when you're working on these projects, are you taking mental notes for the future of like Absolutely. All right, when I'm doing Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and the, yeah. and the other thing is I said this earlier like I was you know 10 years ago I started gaming and I really wanted to be a part of it in any way anybody would let me. Now I have very good friends that are game developers and they are some of the most highly intelligent people I've ever met. They're creative in so many different ways to be able to do their jobs. And um, the level of conversation that you're able to have with a game developer is so high. And, um, you know, I, it's just a community that I would love to, to roll my sleeves up and, and get into in any way some, anyone will let me as the years go on. Very cool. Uh, I believe we have but one question. Well, only the one. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, look, uh, Randy, if nothing else, is a man of his word. Yeah, All right. it's true. So we've it's got true. one left. Let's see, where's it at? <laughs> Right here. Hey, man. Yes, how you doing? Good, how are you? I, yeah, I'm fine. I have one question. Sure. I, um, I just went on a video game binge, and I know you've done that in the past. I have. I would like to know what was the last video game binge you've been on. Mine was 10 hours of, with a uh, video Ten. game. <laughs> yeah, I just would like to know. <laughs> yeah, recently, because I, when I got off of work, my cousin was asleep, and we were supposed to play together. So I wanted to get to his level. So, yeah. Oh, I, man. What was the last video game? Okay, so... Um, I played through all of the Uncharted's to get ready for Lost Legacy, um, like in a row without stopping. <laughs> no sleep, no food. No, like, well, <laughs> bullshit food, like, you know, like, like popcorn and, but it doesn't have salt on it, so it's somehow, I don't know, whatever, whatever <laughs> you tell diet, yourself, like, yeah, you know? <laughs> and I, because also, oh, like, diet I'm too. capable in some ways, but I'm incapable of feeding myself, so, I, there, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just bad at feeding myself or cooking things. So there's like ordering of Amazon things, and there's like a grocery shop for the binge. But you know, I'm not gonna get up to make a thing. So it's just sort of like whatever I can <laughs> shove in my face as a cinematic place. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> the yeah. shortest distance between you and food. Yeah, which whatever is that this, happens to this, be. Yeah. Or like lap to mouth. Yeah. Do you remember the first game that you binged? Like the first time you played? Oh God, um, Bioshock. Yeah. Yeah, man. First one, 2007. Yeah. 2007 was such a good year. But 2017 is a really good year for games too, man. We've been so. So blessed this year yeah. with games. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say Bioshock. Was that it, Randy? That's it, Randy, right? We're good? That's it. <laughs> that is it. Oh, there we go. anyone has questions, you can just talk to that guy right yeah, there. We're gonna, Complain I'm to that guy. I'm going to refer you to Randy. No, no. Um, look, uh, I, obviously we could do this all night. It, it's tons of fun having you here. Thank you so much for carving out some time to come and hang out with us. Uh, congratulations on this, on being part of the canonical story that is. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2 <laughs> on you. what looks to be an amazing game and uh, congratulations just on everything and, and, and best of luck on all these Thanks. crazy really awesome nice things. It's really nice to meet you. It's oh, really nice you. to yeah. hang out with you guys. Spend guys, some time. Come on, make some noise one more time. Gina, you got the bar. My goodness.